course, out of luck when it comes to renewable energy. We don't have enough land, sea space, or great rivers to utilize. But what we have is creativity and the sheer willpower to become more energy efficient. Just look around you. The Singapore Green Plan 2030 is now an important step towards our future. As the world wakes up to the realities of being eco-friendly, some of us are already well on our way. Join me, Belinda Lee, as I discover how Singapore is going green and how Singaporeans are incorporating eco-practices in the comfort of their homes. This is Green Home. One of the key pillars of the Singapore Green Plan 2030 is Energy Reset. It is created specifically to be more energy efficient and to reduce our carbon footprint. Today, I have a very special guest host, and she is none other than Senior Minister of State for National Development, Sim Ann. Let's meet her. Good morning, SMS Simen. Hello, Belinda. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's so nice to see you. As Senior Minister of State for National Development, you are the perfect person to tell us more about Energy Reset. Well, Belinda, the Energy Reset means using cleaner energy, being more energy efficient, and reducing Singapore's carbon footprint. So what this means is that our towns and our buildings will have to be more energy efficient. It also means for instance, ensuring that new registrations for vehicles are cleaner energy models and also expanding our network of electric vehicle charging points and very importantly, quadrupling the deployment of solar power. This means more solar panels on top of our HDB rooftop and also making buildings more energy efficient overall. Oh, you mean the energy reset also applies to our buildings? Absolutely. We have the Singapore Green Building Master Plan to guide us in this effort. Our goal is by 2030, we want to green 80% of Singapore's buildings. And for the best-in-class green buildings, we will want to see an 80% improvement in energy efficiency compared to their 2005 levels. Wow, that's exactly why we're here today, right? Because we're going to meet a local property developer that is leading the way. Shall we meet them? Yes, I'm very excited. Let's, Let's go. go. It's so nice to meet you. Meet SMS, Hi, Esther. We have some questions for you. Can you tell us why was sustainability such a priority for your company when you designed this development? Uh, CDL has started our sustainability journey 26 years ago, since 1995, and founded on our corporate ethos of conserving and reconstruct. Green building resource efficiency has always been a priority and it applies to the way we design, build and manage properties. So for South Beach, this is exceptionally important because South Beach is quite a sizable mixed development with more than 1.5 million square feet of gross floor area. So what are some of the specific ways the design team has done to make this building energy efficient? We are very mindful starting from the drawing board and uh, you look at the orientation of this development, it's north-south. So that means that we actually reduce heat gain, reduce wet spacing, the afternoon sun, and also optimize wind flow and ventilation. And what you can see here is actually, uh, we call it the green spine of the whole development. And uh, you look at this canopy, uh, the wavy design, uh, it's not just aesthetically beautiful. Yeah. It actually has a lot of little Secrets, you know, sustainable and smart features. Wow, what are the secrets? <laughs> of course, the ceiling itself can actually uh, filter the heat from the sun. That's the first one. And you can see that there are some panels, actually the flatter area, it contains about 1,650 uh, PV panels to generate uh, renewable solar energy. And you can see that it may be deep down there, yeah. Yeah, actually, there is a very robust uh, rainwater harvest system. Mm. And you collect the rain, water, and you can use it for irrigation. So Esther, please tell us, with this feature, how much water can be saved? It can actually help us save over 170,000 cubic meters a year. Which is equivalent to? 70 Olympic-sized pools. Wow, that's, that's massive amount of water. Yes, amazing. Yes. Can I go for a tour? Yes, certainly. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Welcome to the Sky 
is really nice. Look at the view. Very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Tell us more about the Sky Garden. Okay, where you are is surrounded by greenery and the entire development has a very extensive use of solar energy. Mm. So Esther, how much electricity will you be saving? The saving annually is about 15 million kilowatt hour. Wow, oh, wow, that's massive. You know, honestly speaking, I am in awe. I'm in shock, really. Because if I didn't go on a tour today, I wouldn't have known the complex and intensive engineering process that it has gone through to make this building an energy efficient building, you know? And it's also environmentally sustainable and it's stunning. Mm, wow. It is. And you know, my takeaway from this visit is that this is not just a beautiful property, but every detail came about because of intentional plan. Yeah. And that's something which we hope to achieve with the Singapore Green Plan 2030. Thank you so much for having Thank us. Thank you, Esther. I've learned so much. You know, Simen, I feel that companies like CDL are key players in achieving energy efficiency in Singapore. Mm -hmm. The efforts in building properties like South Beach is definitely something that we should all move towards. And I'm so, so inspired by this building, really. Well, with pathfinders like them showing the way, I feel confident that more companies can follow suit and that means we can achieve our collective goal of the energy reset sooner. Yes, we can achieve it by 2030, am I right? Absolutely. Now that we have just seen how a large developer attained optimum energy efficiency in Singapore, how about individuals like you and I, right? Let's go meet a Singaporean whom we can be inspired by. I'd love to do that. Let's, Let's go. go. Hi, morning. Hi, hi, Jimmy. Nice hi, to meet hi, you. Jimmy. Hi. This is Senior Minister of State, Sim Ann. Hello. And Good. thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank now, you. I want to know, how do you save energy? Okay, of course, as a Singaporean, we contribute to a better, sustainable Singapore. So, of course, from the first place, we look at our LED lights. And let me show you around. Sure. All right, let's yeah. take a look. Thank you. Okay, and this is our LED TVs, and it's the same logic like an LED light, so it saves like half the, the normal TV energy. Also, I know that when it comes to air con, air conditioners, you also use energy efficient ones, right? Yes, definitely. So we have also changed the inverters at con, and compared to the non inverters, it's also saved at least half the energy. And how often do you use your air con? So typically, we we'll turn on for one to two hours, then after that, the rest of the night will be done by fan. So once you wait for the room to cool down, yes. then you switch on your fan. Switch on the fan for ventilation. Okay, let me show you the energy efficient fridge at the kitchen. Oh, okay. yeah. Let's go. Ah, so this is the one. Yes, this is the one. So this is actually an inverter fridge mm -hmm. and as shown is $100 a year. So as compared to normal fridge, I believe it's saved by half also. I see. Yes. Wow. So this is the way that we inverted the whole house. <laughs> I like the strategy. Way you yeah, the way you invert the whole house. I heard that you have other ways to save energy as well. Yes, definitely. I am driving an electric vehicle also. Let me show you the mm. car. Oh, I want to go for a ride. Yes, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Ah, I see the word electric. This must be your car. Yeah, this is Hyundai Kona Electric. Right. So I've been driving electric vehicle for the past two years. So tell us, what caused you to switch from a traditional car to an EV? My petrol car broke down two years ago. So after I decided to scrap it, and after scrapping it, I was looking for cars around. So there are combustion cars, hybrid cars, and electric cars around. So I was thinking, since 10 years ago, I am very interested in electric vehicle. So I chanced upon this and I adopted it. I see. And you've yes. not looked back since? Not looked back since. It was a fantastic ride. Okay, please convince me. Convince me to change to an EV. <laughs> okay, I'm going for a charge. Would you like to join me? Of course. Certainly. Sure. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. So, Tiaming, besides saving energy at home and driving an electric car, right? I also heard that you do save energy at work as well. Yeah, I'm a director of Electric Private Limited. And for the past two years, we are in electric vehicle infrastructure industry, setting up charging points for public and private uh, areas. So share with us, how has driving an EV brought about personal benefits to you? 
Okay, firstly, for normal users like petrol car, they spend about $400 to $500 of fuel monthly. Charging an EV in normal public charging point, you can actually have a half the saving already. Oh, that's yeah. a lot of savings. That really adds up. Yes, correct. And Singapore Charging Network is expanding and it's very, very good for the whole Singapore. So this is how you charge an EV? Yes, that's right. Oh. It's at the front? Yeah, this is at the front and we are going to do a fast charging now. So we can plug in the charging gun first. There's app and in the app we can actually scan. So you scan the station. And you can start charging. How long does it take to charge? About one hour of charging can give you about 300 kilometers of range. Mm -hmm. So that is really alright for about three, two to three days of usage. Well, wow, Demi, you're really living the energy reset here. Yeah. From 2025 onwards, we're going to be seizing new registrations of diesel cars and taxis. And from 2030 onwards, we are requiring all new registrations of cars and taxis to be cleaner energy models. We have big plans for making EV charging points more available in Singapore. The goal is to see 60,000 EV charging points island-wide, 40,000 of which will be in our public car parks. And to this end, LTA is working very closely with URA, HDB and JTC to expand EV charging infrastructure in our public car parks. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me, what's your impression of Jie Ming? He strikes me as a true blue Mr. EV. Mm -hmm. He's so energetic and passionate. Yeah, I'm actually very inspired by companies like CDL and Singaporeans like Jie Ming who are paving the way for the rest of us to become a more sustainable nation. I feel the same way mm. and I think with strong advocates like them, I think it won't be long before more Singaporeans adopt sustainable lifestyle and I think we'll be that much closer to being a green Singapore. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, why don't you show us what you can do at home? Maybe you're using some energy efficient appliances at home or maybe you have come up with some very creative ways to save energy why don't you upload and share these interesting pictures and videos with us and hashtag green home challenge i feel like i'm the soil i'm the earth and you guys are the beautiful flowers and plants i actually save more energy than you you know why because i don't have a tv at home oh, that's very surprising